Today we're going to talk about when and how to select a braking resistor. Now in a past video we talked about how a regen unit can be used to dissipate the excess energy from a decelerating or overhauling load. This video will be about a braking resistor, a simpler but lower cost way to achieve the same result. How are braking resistors sized? Now as a quick refresher, Anytime the motor is decelerating or overhauling, it's generating energy back towards the drive, which thus causes the drive's DC bus voltage to rise. You can see an example of that in the graph here. On the x-axis, we have time, and the y-axis is the drive's DC bus voltage. The yellow line is an example of a drive without a regen or braking resistor unit. The risk here is if the yellow line becomes too high, it can reach the drive's over voltage level, causing it to trip out into an error. With the addition of a braking resistor, you have the blue line here, which is its switch on off level. Once the DC bus reaches this level, the braking resistor is engaged, any excess energy is dissipated across the resistor, and the DC bus value will plateau. This is shown with the pink line. The DC bus rises, it hits the blue line, it plateaus when the braking resistor is being used, it drops back down, it's used again here, and continues on normally. Thus, the braking resistor is used to dissipate the excess energy and prevent the drive from tripping into an overvoltage fault. So now that we've talked about when a braking resistor should be used, we need to talk about how to select a braking resistor. There are two things to consider when selecting a braking resistor. The first is the resistance value. Now the reason we have to first talk about the resistance of the braking resistor is actually due to the braking transistor. Not the braking resistor, but the braking transistor. So the braking resistor is external to the drive. The braking transistor is internal to the KEB drive and is what switches the current on and off to the resistor. So to calculate what we need for resistance, we look at this basic electrical equation of resistance equals voltage over current. Now within this application, the voltage and current are actually known values, so then we can calculate the resistance. The voltage is the max DC bus voltage within the drive. In our case, it's 880 volts DC. The current value will depend on the drive, but for a basic example, we can use this 44 amps. But again, this will be published within any drive series, and so this is a known value. So with these two known values of the voltage and current, we can then calculate the resistance and in this case, it's just 20 ohms. And again, this is a minimum resistance value. If you use a resistor with a resistance lower than this, your current will then become too high and you risk damaging your braking transistor. So now the second thing you need to look at when sizing the braking resistor is the required power dissipation. So again, we've talked about the minimum resistance value, but now we're talking about the power dissipation. The reason this needs to be calculated is because when the braking resistor is sized properly and working correctly, your DC bus voltage will plateau like you see up here. Assuming it's working properly, but if it's undersized, it can, rather than plateau here, continue to rise up because it doesn't have the available power dissipation for what the motor is generating. Thus, it's crucial to calculate what is needed beforehand. You can do this two ways. The first is a little bit more involved and because of that, we're not gonna write all, all the equations here, but if you would like, you can reference them in our braking resistor manual. Those equations require three variables. The first is the inertia of the system. So this includes both the motor and the load. Second is your change in speed. So this could be, you know, from full speed of 1800 RPM down to zero, or if your operation requires smaller changes of speed. And finally, it's just your time. So it's the amount of time required to make that speed change. So again, these are the only three variables you need, but the equations are a little bit more involved. But if you'd like, you can reference them in our braking resistor manual. So the other simpler way to determine your required power dissipation is using our CombiVis 6 software. So within this software, when you're connected to the drive, you can actually scope out this exact graph of voltage over time throughout the operation. This allows you to track the DC bus voltage of the drive and see how much it is increasing when you're decelerating or overhauling. This allows you to get a better idea of how to select the correct size of braking resistor. Now it's a little bit more trial and error, 
but it's a lot simpler and easier to determine how big of a resistor you need. We've got a lot of manuals and resources available for you on our website. Or if you'd like to speak to someone in person, you can reach out to an application engineer through kebamerica.com.